And welcome back to Take Action News, everybody. David Schuster here on this Saturday afternoon, December the 22nd. So glad to have you with us on We Act Radio Take Action News. We are getting an avalanche of positive response from all of you who are watching us live for our video uh, broadcast on TakeActionNews.com and WeActRadio.com. We thank you for listening and watching and weighing in. Yes, we agree that we are redefining the broadcast landscape with uh, broadcasts like this and expect uh, more of it and even uh, more touches as we ramp things up in the weeks ahead. This particular segment, though, one of the leading broadcasters, whether we can agree or disagree about their content, is Fox News Channel. It's a channel that I worked for uh, many years ago at the startup. They have, I believe, sort of uh, done the best job just in terms of production values on cable news. Their graphics are easy to watch. The lighting is excellent. The shots look terrific. Of course, I have major problems with their content, but from a pure production basis, uh, they are the um, they set the standard. But their content, of course, is a big problem for a lot of us. Well, maybe not a problem. It's just I think it's it's interesting. And let's take example one of the, the great things that Fox News likes to focus on this time of year, and that is that they claim that there is a war on Christmas. They claim there's a war on Christmas. Here's an example from a Bill O'Reilly show, The O'Reilly Factor, where he and his guests are talking about this alleged war. Listen. The war on Christmas is very, very real, and if you ask me, you know, in addition to uh, some grouchy, uh, you know, misanthropic uh, heathen atheists, it has to do with, uh, at, at the root of it, it, it has to do with two things, abortion and, and the gay rights agenda, because Christianity is, is against those things, and, and that's, it's subtle, but uh, that's, why they, they're so, that's why it's so pronounced in, these, in recent years, in my opinion. 100% agree. I absolutely agree 100 percent that it's the the diminishment of Christianity uh, is the target and Christmas is the vehicle because the secularists know their opposition to their agenda. Legalized drugs is in that as well. Uh, comes primarily from the Judeo-Christian traditionalists. All right, so let me get this straight. So the war on Christmas is being um, acted upon by progressives, by Democrats, who are somehow trying to undermine the Judeo-Christian traditions in our country. Uh, because through things like uh, abortion rights, women's rights, gay rights, and the victim in all of this yeah. is the Christmas holiday mm -hmm. itself. Um, Daniel Marins, what's your reaction to that? And, and, and help us analyze what is the political play here? What does Fox News gain by promoting this kind of stuff? Well, David, I mean, you hear it all the time. Fox News' viewership is sort of the diminishing, embittered white demographic in this country, sort of somewhat educated but generally not extremely educated older white people and especially white men and so it's obvious that they would sort of play toward their resentment to the new uh, oncoming immigrant groups what, what's astonishing to me David is sort of the just complete denial of reality that it takes to sort of promote this idea of the war on Christmas specifically because Christmas has been in America really a secularized holiday for decades now and that was actually done deliberately by many cultural figures in the old liberal cultural elite back in, in the middle of the 20th century. I'm thinking of, of Irving Berlin and singers, many of whom, singers and songwriters, many of whom were Jewish, who basically wrote songs like White Christmas that scrubbed the Jesus out of Christmas, that turned Christmas into a secular winter holiday of consumption, okay? Which, which is what we now think of it as, right? I mean, sure... There's a there's a there's a probably a significant a, a small majority of Americans that still celebrate Christmas for the birth of Christ and the uh, you know sort of the traditional manger scenes and everything like that and I and I you know I love religions and I think that that's very powerful and very moving and and everyone should should be well and be happy in doing that but we shouldn't kid ourselves into thinking that that part of Christmas somehow went into the decline only recently with the rise of kind of the secular left. This has been going on for decades. What hasn't been going on for decades is the, is the embittered sort of declining white male old right wing in this country mm -hmm. looking for scapegoats and seeing their political power ebbing away and finding reasons for that. Mitch Malaski, I want to ask you about the, sort of the, the tone of the coverage. Uh, Media Matters studied uh, how much Bill O'Reilly focused on the war against Christmas and compared to how much he focused on real wars like conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, and Gaza. And they found that uh, from December 1st to 18th, uh, 55 minutes and 10 seconds in the war on Christmas, 15 minutes and 3 mm. seconds on actual wars. What's your reaction? 
Well, clearly, Mr. O'Reilly has, uh, you know, has a target in mind for one he for what he wants to seek out. But I think it's sort of ironic because what he, you know, talks about the war on Christmas as uh, as the non-Christians declaring war on Christians, where I feel like it's really for most everyone else who's not Christian, it feels the other way around from the beginning. In that Christianity, in all sorts of ways, is being forced upon you and is being, you know, and you are required to become Christian and to follow all your Christian holidays and traditions. And I think it's actually um, you know, the war on non-Christians that is not getting any mention in this fictitious war on Christianity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, poor atheists who are out there have got to uh, listen to uh, to all this. And, you know, the one thing that yeah, I know... Well, atheists, but I think, you know, there's there's Jews, there's Sikhs, there's yeah. Muslims, you know, there's a large population in America that's, that's not Christian that, you know, uh, I think most people these days come to appreciate... Uh, the holidays, and you know, you get sick of some songs in stores, but you know, whatever, whatever. It's 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 Christmas, and and you accept it. But uh, but but yeah, there's certainly this this uh, it, it, it there's the reaction is definitely uh, overreaction uh, is is a. Uh, Definitely taking out of, out of context. Agree, and if if we are going to call it a war, I think then you have to argue that uh, the founders of our constitution they are on the opposite side then of, of Bill O'Reilly and, and the folks at Fox News because the the one example they like to cite is that oh you can no longer have the manger scene uh, on government buildings or government property that somehow this is this is a war on on Jesus and and the birth and all that because you can't do this. Well, the fact of the matter is that our Supreme Court in interpreting the separation of church and state. They came up with this ruling and says, no, you can, you can have these manger scenes, but it's got to be on private property. It cannot be on government property. It cannot be on the government-owned public square. That in those occasions, it's got to be a non-religious sort of scene commemorating Christmas or Hanukkah. And so I think for folks on the right, if, if you're mad about that, then take it up with the courts. Blame the courts for taking this stuff away. But the idea that you know progressives are somehow are involved in this this war on Christmas, I you know I think it's malarkey. But I, I do think to Daniel Marins, to your point, it does get to the politics that this is a way of uniting the Fox News viewers and, and making it more of uh, of the the anti Fox people against against us. It's sort of a them versus us sort of tradition over at Fox News that I think helps their coverage. We're going to take another break. We'll talk with uh, with uh, one person from Media Matters about the misinformer of the year. It is not Bill O'Reilly. Stick around. You're watching and listening to Take Action News on WeAct Radio. <laughs> 